In the initial hours of the attack, Stalin hesitated to respond, thinking that the reports coming back were the actions of a rogue general. Although accounts by Nikita Khrushchev, who would later lead the Soviet Union, and Anastas Mikoyan, an old Bolshevik statesman, claimed that after the invasion Stalin retreated for several days in seclusion, there is documentary evidence of orders given by Stalin contradicting these claims. Within weeks of the opening of the Eastern Front, it was clear that Hitler and the German military had prepared for a total war, amassing over four million soldiers, thousands of tanks and aircraft, and over 40,000 artillery and heavy guns. In September of 1941, Stalin petitioned the British government, desiring two agreements, that they would secure a mutual assistance and aid pact, and for the British government to recognize the territorial gains made by the Soviet Union under this method, pact with Nazi Germany. British diplomats agreed to assistance with the Soviets, but refused to agree to the territorial gains. Months later, as the military situation in the East deteriorated, Stalin accepted the British offer. While the diplomats worked behind the scene, the German army pressed deep into Soviet territory. By December of 1941, Hitler's troops had advanced to within 20 miles of Moscow. The Nazis continued to advance. Hitler had sworn that he would enter Moscow on November 7th. Eighty-five Nazi divisions were held at the city. They advanced, but over a landscape carpeted with Nazi dead. Russia has been attacked. It has been at war since June. A ruthless enemy, backed by the armament factories of occupied Czechoslovakia, France, Belgium, Austria, backed by millions of brutalized young men, drunk with success, a juggernaut army of fire and steel which has never received a setback. This army is approaching Moscow. And Moscow citizens go all out for defense. Barrage balloons. This is our city, our street, our playground. Stalin and his closest military advisors immediately retaliated, launching a counteroffensive that pushed the German military back 40 miles. This was the Wehrmacht's first significant defeat of the war, which in the Soviet Union was called the Great Patriotic War. Calm, grave, without oratory, while the advanced panzers of the Nazis were 12 and a half miles away, the Soviet Premier spoke to the people of Moscow. The the whole world is looking to you as a force capable of destroying the hordes of German invaders. A great mission of liberation has fallen to your lot. Be worthy of this mission. The war you are waging is a war of liberation, a just war. Death to the German armies of occupation.
movement, each brigade. The time is now. 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 First Soviet newspaper in months. A guerrilla poster. The enemy will not escape us. In 1942, Hitler came to terms with the fact that a swift Nazi victory in the East was not possible without taking troops from other theaters to bolster his invasion of the Soviet Union. By this time in the war, acquiring needed resources was a paramount issue, and the oil fields in the southern Soviet Union were vital to the German war effort. As German troops shifted south and Stalin's generals saw evidence of this change, Stalin thought that it was only a flanking campaign to invade Moscow. The Nazi southern campaign was repulsed by the Soviet army, although the cost in terms of casualties was enormous. This Soviet success allowed them to take the offensive against the Germans for the remainder of the war on the Eastern Front. A critical success for Stalin and his military came when the Germans attempted an encirclement attack at Kursk, a city 450 kilometers or 280 miles south of Moscow. Kursk was prized by the Soviets for its rich iron ore deposits and that it was the location of a major railroad hub. The Soviets repelled the attack. At this time, Stalin became more willing to listen to his generals. By the end of 1943, the Soviet army retook over half of the territory taken by the Germans in the two previous years. Stalin increased military industrial output substantially from the late 1941 to early 1943 moving his factories far to the east, away from the front, and safe from German air attack. 